to think that God would let us have a part in in his work, amen? amen. That he would use old, uh, old sinners like us even to to sing a song, sing songs like that. You know, we are truly blessed, aren't we? We um, we have so much to, as the first song said, to be thankful for. He has been so good to us, better to us than we deserve. Amen. And uh, we do have to, we do at times have to stand still, don't we? And if we won't stand still, he'll he'll help us to stand still, won't he? <laughs> and uh, you know the. The children of Israel had that problem when they were standing at the Red Sea, remember? Amen. Of course, they had uh, two big mountains, one on each side of them. Pharaoh and his people coming after them. A big body of water before them. So they were no different than us. But Moses told them to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. And, uh, you know, that's what it's about. You know, isn't it, isn't it a blessing that, uh, you know, we... That's what we all have in common is salvation. That's what brings all of us together is salvation in one called Jesus. Isn't that a great thing? Where would we be if it wasn't for Jesus? We, uh, we may be in prison. We may be six feet under. We don't know. But boy, aren't we thankful that he came by our way one day. Right by where we were. You know, no man seeks God. We wasn't seeking God when we were lost. We were seeking a lot of things, but wasn't God. But you know, he come to where we were. And boy, isn't that a wonderful thing. Well, if you have your Bibles tonight, uh, be opening up to John chapter 4. Of course, a very familiar passage of Scripture. I've had a thought on my heart this afternoon. You know, we know what the, the greatest story ever told was. You know, that's about Jesus. But boy, from that greatest story that was ever told comes many more great stories that get to be told because of that great, great story. We're going to read down. We're going to begin reading here in just a moment in verse 4 of John St. John 4, verse 4, we'll begin there, and we'll, we will read down through uh, the, uh, the 41st verse, and then we'll pray and ask the Lord to help us here tonight, and then you may be seated. Verse 4 here says, And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called a Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, Ask his drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank there himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. 
In that saidst thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile his disciples prayed to him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Therefore the disciples said, therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that hath sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, Lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, One soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and you are entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which testified. He told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were coming to him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. And he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. And we'll stop right there with the reading. Let us pray. Father, we, we just want to thank you, Lord. For, Lord, just the opportunity to be back in your house here tonight. Lord, with your precious folks. Lord, we thank you for how you met with us this morning and, Lord, how you blessed and, and what you, the instruction you gave us, Lord, and how you uh, applied it into our hearts, Father. But now, Lord, here we are again tonight, gathered around your word, dear God, and asking you that, Lord, you would just uh, come down for a while and meet with us here in a special way. Lord, we do pray once again that you would give us ears that can hear and hearts that can receive uh, what thus saith the Lord. Lord, we do pray that if there be one here that doesn't know Jesus as Savior, that, Lord, you would show them their need to be saved before it's too late. Lord, we pray that if there be one here discouraged, Lord, along this walk of life, that, Lord, that your sweet words tonight would uh, encourage uh, that individual. And then, Lord, we pray that uh, your children would be uh, strengthened and encouraged, uh, Lord, from the, the, from the words of life that you give each and every one of us tonight. Now, Lord, we want to thank you for what you're going to do in advance. Because we ask it all in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. You know, herein, uh, what we just read is, uh, of course, is a, is a wonderful story, isn't it? You know, of, uh, of salvation for this woman, but not just for her, but many in the city. And, of course, it is, uh, a, it, the opportunity was afforded to them because of Jesus. You know, and that, that's, that is still God's plan for today. Do you know that? You know that Crossroads Baptist Church, that's still the plan today. That is still the way that people get saved today is because somebody goes and shares the old, old story. And somebody goes and shares even their story. You know, you got to have a story, Brother Tommy. You got to have a story. You know, there is from the, from the beginning of the Bible all the way to the back, there are stories of people that have come uh, to know Jesus. And, but there's also stories of people that came close to knowing Jesus. Of course, that doesn't work. You know, but, uh, but you know, I, I think of uh, some of them stories, you know, tonight and you know, I, I think of, uh, and I'll probably crisscross some of them because there's so many. 
But you know, I think about, I even think about a young lad named David. How that he, uh, he was back doing what he was supposed to do on the back side of the hills, taking care of his daddy's sheep. But even doing that, he knew God, the Bible said. And uh, God, God used him uh, in a mighty way. And he was known as uh, the giant slayer. You know, that's what he was known as. One of the first things was the giant slayer. He was, uh, he was known as being anointed the next king, even though all of his brothers probably uh, thought they were going to get it. You know, and you just think about that. Of course, a lot happened in David's life. Of course, he was known. He had the story being known as a, a man. At, God said this about him, that he was a man after God's own heart. Now, of course, we know that he, uh, he was a man and he sinned. And that, that, that's in his story. But boy, he sure has a lot of, had a lot of wonderful things in his story. But you know, it, it wasn't just with him. You think about Noah. You know, Noah found grace in the eyes of God, Genesis says over there. And uh, you know, uh, Noah was uh, a command, instructed of God to go and to build an ark. And he was given all the dimensions. Because this thing called rain that they had never seen. You know, we had a lot of rain over the last uh, day or so. <laughs> we had our share of it. But you imagine not knowing rain. You know, these folks didn't know rain. They'd never had rain. All they'd ever had was mist, Brother Charlie. They'd never know rain. And uh, you imagine that the Bible says that he, he spent over 100 years building this ark. You think about his story. Man, what, no, no doubt his story, he took a lot of uh, criticism, no doubt. Swinging this hammer, every swing of this hammer uh, uh, told of, uh, of his faith in Jesus. But you imagine, and God was no doubt proud of that, you know, the, of, the, of every time he swung that hammer. Him and his sons uh, built on this ark for, for over 100 years. But uh, you, you think about uh, the, story that he, uh, the story that he had because he had faith. But yes, he had a story that he, now again, he, he, uh, he had some problems along the way. But he found faith in God because of his righteousness. You know, because of his faithfulness, because of his faithfulness in God. He was, uh, you know, he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But, you know, not just uh, Noah, not just David, but you think on as, as we go, you know, as, as, the, as the list goes on. You think about little Daniel as a young man who was, uh, was part of 300 young people that you could have been, you, could have, you know, they were took over for an experiment. You could have said that they were some of the first uh, foreign exchange students. You know, you heard about foreign exchange. You could have said they were some of the first ones. And uh, they were taken over into a place that they knew nothing about, where they were expected to learn a language and cultures that they knew nothing about. But yet, uh, they didn't forget about God. You know, and they had a story because of that. Daniel had... Uh, uh, they thought for sure he would be ate up by the lions and the king come the next morning and thought he was going to be ate up and was surprised when he heard that Daniel had made it through the night. And of course, you know, Daniel had purposed in his heart not to defile himself because then that would defile God. But then you think of his three buddies, the Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and how that they, uh, and of course they were on that uh, a foreign exchange student journey they were on that but remember they were also cast into the fiery furnace but they wasn't in there alone there was a fourth person running around and imagine their story they they came out and they didn't even smell like smoke <laughs> nobody wondered had they been smoking or anything because they didn't even smell like smoke they had been in the fire with it turned way up and the king looked in and seen them running around in the fire didn't see them burning seen them running around and seen a fourth one with them and, uh, you know, and that was uh, their story. But, uh, you know, the men that threw them in there, remember, they got, they got thrown into it right after that because <laughs> the king got mad. That was their story, by the way. They didn't make it. You know, uh, stories after stories, you think about, uh, hey, think about Jonah. You know, Jonah was a very rebellious preacher, wouldn't do what God said, and so ran off and jumped on a ship and was going to do his own thing wound up a storm coming and he got tossed up and swallowed up by a well spent three days and three nights in the belly of a well and then God commanded the well to spit him out on the shore he come back then he, did, then he was going to go do what God said but you know he never did uh, do it in the right, with the right heart 
He still didn't feel that. And he was part of the, he was down where the greatest revival of all times took place because everybody in the city of Nineveh got saved. Wow. Everybody got a story. <laughs> everybody got a story that mattered down in that city. Yeah. Everybody got a story. They all got saved. My, what a, well, that would just, uh, how would all the news media explain that today? Huh? <laughs> They'd have a way, wouldn't they? <laughs> they? They wouldn't give it credit for what it was, but they would, they would try and explain it away. But wow, what a story. But you know, uh, Jonah's story was he still wasn't happy in the end. He still wasn't happy in the end that he got to witness all that. My, what a story, you know, that he goes down and, uh, you know, and that's, that's part of the story. Hey, think about Paul. You know, Paul was uh, a man that uh, witnessed Stephen's death and, and uh, went and got decrees from all the people in charge to have Christians who believed that way to be brought out of their houses, delivered to the magistrates, the judges, uh, participated in some of them dying. But then one day, headed to Damascus to do the same thing again, he met Jesus. His path got interrupted. By the way, when you get a story, your path gets interrupted, don't it? <laughs> yeah, when you get a story, your path gets interrupted, you know, and his path got interrupted, and uh, he met Jesus, didn't he? And boy, you know, when you, when you always, when, you, when your story is one that you meet Jesus, you know, you always seem differently, don't you? You speak, to, speak of him differently. You know, Paul said, Lord... You know, what would thou have me to do? And my, what a story that was. And boy, he spent, his story took him to places that he never probably ever dreamed of going, doing things he probably never ever dreamed of doing, all because his story. Hey, the last few years of his life he spent uh, with a ball and chain strapped to a chain to a Roman soldier. For the last several years of his life, he, fought, he wrote four, four, uh, four of his epistle letters he wrote from prison. But he never complained about that story. He just kept telling that old, old story and, and his story about on the Damascus Road. And you know, you go through story after story after story, you know, and then you come here tonight, and there's many more. We don't even, hey, think about Nicodemus. His story was that he came to Jesus by night because of his, his uh, place, uh, you know, his, his position in, uh, the Jew, in, in, Jewish, Jewish, uh, in, in the Jews because of his position there in leadership. He came by night to see Jesus. Of course, he probably couldn't sleep either because of what he'd seen and heard. But he came by night to see Jesus and, and no doubt he... He got what he came for that night. You ever came and got what you come for? He got what he come for. You say, how do you know that? Because when Jesus died on the cross, when Joseph of Arithmia come to take down the body of Jesus, Nicodemus came, and Nicodemus brought all the, the different uh, ointments and different things that were used to embalm the body with. You know, that's what Nicodemus came with. That's what he come bringing. You know, hey, he had a story, didn't he? He had a story. You know, if you, met, if you know Jesus tonight, you got a story. You know, and again, you know, the, man, the list just goes on and on and on. And here we have uh, a woman with a story. You know, there's some things about, you know, our stories, even our old stories. Oh, by the way, there was one other one too. I mean, there was many more, but think about one that didn't get that good story. Think about Nick, or think about... Uh, Agrippa, King Agrippa, that's who, over there in Acts 26, remember Agrippa wanted to hear Paul speak. I wanted to give him time to speak, and Paul spoke and, uh, uh, and, and made his case and, and everything and, uh, and uh, shared his, uh, you know, his case with him, made his case. And, you know, in Agrippa, in the very end, Agrippa said uh, some of the most saddest words in all the Bible. We never hear of Agrippa again. But he says some of the saddest words in all the Bible. He said, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Boy, that's a story you wouldn't want. By the way, that'd be like walking in here tonight after sitting through this service and leaving this place lost and undone. And, 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 not, and something happening and not making it. Agrippa come that close. 
He sat under the preacher man. He heard the story of the preacher man and his, test, his story. And all he could say was, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. You think about the rich man in hell. The Bible said he died, he was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments. And he seen Abraham afar off, and he cried, Father Abraham, he said, uh, come, and, come and save me for this torment. You know, torment was fire is another word. There's, there's several words there for fire. And he said, for I am tormented in this flame. You know, the rich man, no doubt, would have wrote check after check after check after check for one drop of water. But his money wasn't no good in hell. And that's his story. You know, the rich man even in his mind become a believer, but in hell. You say, what do you mean? Well, he got to the place where he realized he had no hope. And he said, hey, I got five brothers at home that are following me here. Would you send somebody by to warn them? That's his story. And if God is true, he's still down there tonight realizing how close he was. You know, it, it does matter what our story is. You know that? It matters. Look here at a few things here tonight, and then we'll be done. Look at verse, uh, you know, Jesus knows even our old stories. Look what he says to this woman here in this, this encounter with this woman. And in verse uh, Verse 16, Jesus saith unto her, he says, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. Verse 17 says, The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus saith unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husbands. Or no husband. He said in verse 18, he said, For thou hast had five husbands. And he, who, he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidst thou truly. You know, the God knows our old stories, doesn't he? And still, he loves us. Still, he wants to help us. Still, he wants to save us. You know, look at how Jesus dealt with sinners. He didn't call this woman out for her sin. Did you see how he brought it about in a way that it come out? <laughs> he said, uh, go call thy husband and come hither. She wanted some of this water. He, she said, give me this water that I thirst not, uh, neither come hither to draw anymore. She said, give me this water you're talking about. And Jesus says, hey, go call thy husband and uh, come hither then. You know, God knows all about our old stories. <clears throat> he knows them. And he didn't, uh, he didn't hold them against us, praise the Lord. He didn't... Uh, he didn't rub our nose in or anything. No, he has a way of just uh, bringing it out, don't he? You know, God's different than anybody else. And he, you know, he wants to say this. Because he knows our stories, he must needs come by our way. You know, he said up there in verse 4, he said, and he must needs go through Samaria. Hey, because if you're here tonight and you're saved, Boy, aren't you glad that there was a day God must needs come by your way? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you went out there with a sign looking for him or saying, uh, uh, come quick, Jesus, or something like that. You wasn't you holding no sign waiting on him. You and I were lost in our sins, going about this old story, our old lives, and Jesus come by one day. Jesus must needs come by our way one day. And gave us the opportunity, just like he did this woman, to be saved. And, and my, what a, you know, my, what a blessing. Hey, you think about this. It's been some 2,000 years ago since this woman got this story. <laughs> and here we are some 2,000 years later still preaching about her story. <laughs> wow. Boy, that, isn't that, some stories get old. <laughs> Some stories uh, aren't worth repeating, they say sometimes. You know, some stories you read them one time and then you never pick them up again. 
But not when it comes to Jesus, amen. Not when it comes to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Boy, when that becomes your story, Brother Ronnie. My, what a story. When that becomes our story. Hey, this woman got a story this night. But you know, this is, this is just the beginning here of this. They're, 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 we're not even to the end, to verse to the end of verse 41 yet. There's, the business is going to pick up even more. But here, this woman has a story. She has a story. She went on here to say, uh, she said, The woman saith to him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Wow. She, she's already getting a different understanding of who this is talking to her. She said, I perceive thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. But Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when neither shall, uh, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You know, they didn't know. She didn't know what she was worshiping, Brother Tommy, before this. But now she's going, she knows that she's going to learn about worship. In verse 22, he said, you worship, you know not what. He said, you worship, but you don't know. You don't worship the true and the living God. You can't worship God if you don't have a story. If you don't have his story. And he said, you worship what you know, not what. He said, we know what we worship, Jesus said, for salvation is of the Jews. The hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. And hey, those ones that, verse, uh, the next verse there said, but for God, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And you know what, when, when the spirit comes in, and when you, when you accept the truth, you get a story. And then you can truly worship the Father. You can truly worship God then. Now the woman saith unto him, she said, I know that Messiah's cometh. Remember, they were before the cross. They're waiting on the Messiah to come. She said, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. <laughs> Didn't he just do that? He just told her all things, didn't he? By the way, he, he tells us all things. We, we, uh, he tells us all things about the sin in our life, doesn't he? So that we can uh, have a story. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Now you, you jump down there to verse 28. And it says, The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and saith to the men. You know, always... I always find that interesting there. I don't know if that was the six men that were involved in her life, you know, five former husbands and the man she's with now. I find that uh, something there that she went and saith to the men, called them out. May have been, huh? Verse 29, she, this is what she said to him. She said, come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Boy, is that how, by the way, that's how, that's how you should respond <laughs> after you get that story of Jesus. Boy, it should just, uh, man, it should be like any other story that you've ever had. It should be like anything. It should, it should be different than anything else. Boy, she said, hey, come see a man that told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Of course, the disciples come back there. They've got meat. They've want, he, don't want, he don't need it, and they're wondering if somebody fed him. But now look down at verse uh, 39. Jump on down to verse 39. We'll look back up there at 35 through 38 in just a moment, but look down at verse 39. Because there's some other people that, are gone, that, are, that need a story. It said, And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that ever I did. You know, we get a story, obviously, so we can go to heaven and not go to hell. But also that story so we can share it with others. It said that many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman. For the saying of the woman. Because... Uh, 
because she come back to the town and said, hey, come see a man that told me all things that ever I did is not this the Christ. It said many of the Samaritans that believed on him, hey, you know what happened? Hey, they got a story. They got a story. You know, hey, they, they got a story because of what, what took place in her life. Verse 40 says, So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And verse 41 says, And many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, Now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. You know, there's a couple things based on what it says there that have to happen before you can get a story. You have to hear him yourself. And you have to recognize and believe that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior. Hey, many more got a story there. Many more of them got stories there. Because in all this started because <clears throat> she got a story. Boy, isn't that great? So that's what it's supposed to be about. We're supposed to go out into the highways and the hedges and, 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 and compel them to come in. We're supposed to go to the workplace and, and share Jesus with them. We're supposed to go uh, wherever and tell them about the Lord. Oh, yes, yeah, some of them are going to, some of them are not going to want to hear it. Some of them may uh, even uh, slam the door or, or slam the window. They may do something, but you know what? We got to go anyway and tell them that they can have a story. Because look what it says in verses 35 through 38. Here is a, uh, I wrote down here that here is a, uh, yeah, right here in the middle of this woman's story, you know, Jesus put in a, uh, he put in a lesson, if you please, on soul winning. Did you see that there? Look what he says there. He says, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. You know, a lot of things were based on gardening, harvest and stuff, and, and waiting on it. He said, he said, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. He said, Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. He said, And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth, another reapeth. He said, I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and you are entered into their labors. You know, some water, some uh, fertilize, some uh, weed out the weeds. And God, of course, gives the increase. But that's how stories are made. That's how stories are made when it comes to saving. Yeah, Jesus has to do the saving, no doubt. He's the only one that can save. But he lets us have a place in it. And, and look at that. He, as quick as this woman got saved, she went back. <laughs> Already she went. She didn't have to go through a 12 step program of how to sow win. Nothing wrong with that. Not, nothing wrong with discipleship. But boy, she didn't waste no time, did she, Brother Tommy? She didn't have to wait. She went right back to town and she said, Hey, come see a man that told me all that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? And of course, many of them came, the Bible said. I don't know how many. You say, was it the whole town? I don't know. He just said many came and, and many believed. And many got stories. Boy, isn't that a great thing? Hey, that's what it's about, folks. That's what this is all about. Hey, look, I never, uh, I never intended to go to prison, <laughs> to be going to prison, to tell people about Jesus. I never intended on that. Um, I'd have been okay doing anything else. <laughs> but uh, that's just the way it went. That's just the way the story went. But it's a, it's a wonderful thing. 
Now, I get to stand before young people and tell them as well at Gold Academy there in Cleveland. I've been in there eight years getting to go in, and we continue on. We're on a break right now, but we'll come back the first week of February, the first Wednesday in February, and we'll uh, get right back at it. They need a story. They need a story. They need to know Jesus. Uh, we have these classes out here. I'll go to Duck. I'll jump in my vehicle tomorrow afternoon, head to Ducktown. Look, I'll be at the print shop all day volunteering. I'll pick my grandkids up from Lake Forest. I'll head home and um, get ready to go and get up there, try to get there about five and start class. Have uh, three or four kids there for an hour. To Why? Well, not because I needed something to do. Not because I wanted to just drive to Ducktown. <laughs> Been doing it 12 years now, so it wasn't something I just, I don't just want to take a trip to Ducktown every Monday for 12 years. <laughs> Pretty much, not every Monday for 12 years, but most of them. No. Somebody come by my house 22 years ago. The, the surveyor came by 22 years ago, and I got a story. And so uh, I'm hoping that some of them will get a story. And then Tuesday night we'll be right down the, here in Benton because there's two or three in there that they need help. They need a story. You know, there is uh, there's about 15 people in here. Well, there's about 17 people in here with, with the, 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 the uh, man back there in the back, yeah. There's 17 of us here. Well, would to God that we, when we leave this place tonight, all 17 of us have a story. It'd be a tragedy. You know what would be the tragedy? For us to leave this place in just a few minutes and, 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 and it end for some of us tonight and we didn't have a story. Yeah. There's a lot of people didn't wake up today. Here, there's got to be somebody didn't wake up here in Polk County today somewhere. And Bradley County the same. Got to be some. There's many throughout the whole world that didn't wake up today. In their in their minds, their story was for them to wake up, but it didn't wake up. And the only way they're going up is if they have that story. Some of it may have been an accident in their death. Some of it may have been health related, but the bottom line is if they're over about nine years old, the age of accountability, where they know right from wrong, they, they, the only way they're going up is if they got a story, folks. You got to have a story. Man, I didn't do nothing to deserve my story. They came and knocked. I was door number 80. I was saved in my living room. 22 years ago I didn't do anything I couldn't have paid for it I didn't deserve it I didn't earn it you know God gave me a story sent somebody by just like he came to this woman right here and she got a story and isn't it ironic that that story is still being told today still being shared today her story not just her but there's many stories in this old book right here there's stories that, that, that matter. There's stories that uh, people that how close they came but didn't make it. And by the way, that's the case all around us. There's people that are making it and there's people that aren't making it. Would to God that we would do all we can to help somebody get a story that'll get them there. As they come to get a song tonight... We won't be labor, the invitation, but you may, you, there may be somebody here that's not saved, needs a story. Be a good night to get a story. There's people here that would like to take the Bible. If you're here and you're not saved, there's people that like to take the Bible.